Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and we are going to do this next lesson, which is on angle-angle similarity. We're going to expand this in the coming sections, but right now we're just going to cover angle-angle. You already know similarity, and over here, if you have two angles of one triangle similar, or congruent, sorry, to two corresponding angles of another triangle, then the triangles are similar. So what does that mean? That means if A over here and D are congruent, if B and E are congruent, that's all you need is two angles to be congruent to each other. Now, automatically, these triangles will be similar, so the parts will be in proportion as far as the side lengths. The angles will be congruent, but the side lengths will be in a proportion. Properties for similarity, we have reflexive, which you know what reflexive means, and we have symmetric, and then transitive. Well, we've done all these, and they just carry forward to similarity. Now, let's do a few examples. I know over here I said additional examples, none, but I did put a few for you here. So let's do some of these examples. The first one, it says, determine whether the triangles are similar. If so, write the similarity statement. Over here, this is 75, and, well, this is 60. That's 60. We know that. Let's see what the remaining angle is on each of these triangles. So 180 minus the 75 minus the 60 would give me 45. Well, there you go, 60, 45, so that obviously would be 75. So 45, 45, and that's 60 right there. So these two triangles will be similar by angle, angle. Over here, this is 90. This is 42. That's 58. Let's see what if we can find this one, right, because this will be 180. And this angle in here would end up being 48, because 48, 42 would give me the other 90. So that means this angle in here is 22. So no, there is no similarity there. Actually, this would be 32. Sorry about that. Okay, now on these next ones, show that they're similar. Okay, over here, oh, they, we forgot to write the similarity statement on number one. So here you could say triangle W x, y is similar to triangle. Now, I named it from W to x, so the 45 to 75, so that means S, T, R, S, T, R. Over here, show that the two triangles are similar. Well, if these two are congruent, then that means these lines are parallel. Why? Because of the converse of corresponding angles, and if these are parallel, these would be congruent. So now you have the two triangles, E, C, G, and E, F, E, D, F, right here, similar. For this one, look, these are parallel right here. Here's the transversal, so this angle is congruent to that one, and they already told me the other ones. So these two are by angle, angle, right, just like here, angle, angle, and we've proved that those are similar. Okay, moving on, I'm going to skip these. I want to do some of the ones on this next page here, and... Um, it's these two proofs that I want to go over. So let's look at this first proof, number nine. It says, use the given figure to write a two-column proof. A, B, and C, and A, B, C, and C, B, D are right angles. I need to prove that angle A right here is congruent to angle C, B, D, this one in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we could do this. I'll go ahead and make my T-chart right here. We have our statements, we have our reasons. I'm gonna, I don't have enough room here, but this is the given. And then let's go ahead with our next steps. So for the next step, we have to see if we can prove these two triangles are similar. Well, <clears throat> if we know that this is a right angle right here, so they both have this right angle, each of them have a right angle, right? So we could say angle B, D, C is congruent to angle C, B, A because all right angles are congruent, okay? They did it as A, they wrote it as A, B, C right there, so that's fine. <clears throat> that's based on the given. This was step two. So step three, what I'm going to say is, look, angle C is congruent to angle C by reflexive. And what am I doing here? Well, I'm separating out this triangle and the larger triangle. That's what I'm proving to be similar. 
So that leaves me with step four. Now I've got this angle that's similar and this, and that's, or this angle that's congruent and this angle that's congruent to each of them. So now I could say triangle CBA is similar to triangle. Now if I said CBA, I would have to say CDB. CDB, and that's my angle-angle similarity post postulate. So that leaves us with angle A congruent to angle, and we called it CBD, and that would be by definition of similar triangles that the angles would be congruent. Okay, moving on to the next one, I'm making my T-chart with statements and reasons over here. We are given that uh, this one, YZ and YV, are congruent. And then over here, uh, X, Y, and W, Y are congruent as well. So right away, you can see the vertical angles. So I'm going to put this in my givens right here. I'm going to be lazy, and I'll just put the arrow that those were my givens. Step two, let's see what we could do with step two. Let me slide this up a little bit here. And in step two, I'm going to say right away, the reflexive part, that angle x, y, w, x, y, w is congruent to angle, um, well, it, it could vary how you want to say it, but we're going to say v, y, z, angle v, y, z, and this is because they are vertical angles. So now, we don't know, oops, we don't know that these are parallel, okay? I know some of you want to conclude, oh, alternate here. We don't know that. So we cannot conclude that because we don't know that those two are parallel. So let me go ahead and erase these lines. But what we do know is these are congruent to each other right there, which tells me that this angle right in here and this angle are congruent, right, by the isosceles triangle theorem. And same over here on this side. These two are congruent as well. And because of that, since I have the vertical angles right in here, well then, if I, just imagine, if this triangle is 180 right in here, right, and say the vertical angle was 40, that leaves me with 140, so each of these have to be 70, right? Same with over here, that leaves me with 140, so each of these have to be 70. So by default, it works out that angle X will be congruent to angle Z, Angle W will be congruent to angle V, and vice versa. They'll all be congruent. Okay? So, if you were to have called this X, right, you can find what these two values would be right in here because you have 180 minus the X divided by 2. 180 minus the X divided by 2. This would be 180 minus the X divided by 2. That's what each of those angles would be. Now, you can add them up and verify that that would work. And over here, you would get 180 minus the x divided by 2, 180 minus the x divided by 2. So we could say angle um, x is congruent to angle w and angle z congruent to angle v because isosceles triangle theorem. And because of that, at this point now, we can say that angle X will be congruent to angle Z, which will be congruent to angle W, which will be congruent to angle V. Okay, by definition, or we'll say triangle sum theorem, right? Because they add up to be 180. And by default now, we end up with triangle X, Y, W is similar to triangle V, Y, Z by angle, angle, similarity. And we are done. All right, so thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.